finished the Darkest Minds trilogy years ago and can't remember what quite happened? Let me catch you up. Once upon a time, there was a little girl named Ruby. She was in school when a plague called Ian broke out. It only affected kids and lots of her classmates died, but Ruby survived and so did a lot of other kids. But all of them ended up with one of five powery side effects. This was pretty scary for the grown-ups, so the government threw all the power kids into terrible rehabilitation camps. At camp, they were divided into one of five groups labeled by color. Blues, kids who have the force. Greens, kids who are really good at math. Yellows, kids who can manipulate electricity. Reds, kids who can manipulate fire. And oranges, kids who can manipulate minds. And as a group, the government called them the Sides. Since oranges are like a huge threat with their whole mind manipulation thing, Ruby pretends to be a green. I'm just really good at math and remembering. But Ruby's really an orange. Back at her house, she accidentally erased her parents' minds on the morning of her 10th birthday, and now they don't even know who she is. At Thurmond, her concentration camp, Ruby feels really alone, but then she makes this friend named Sam, and they become besties. But then one day, she accidentally erases herself from Sam's mind, and she's all alone again. Eventually, this lady Kate shows up from the society called the Children's League. She helps Ruby escape, and she gives her this panic button to press if anything happens and they get separated. At first, it's all cool, but once they've been on the road together for a while, Ruby starts to think, hey, this is a little weird. Like, am I suspicious of this Kate? So Ruby runs away from Kate and right into Chubbs, a lovable nerd in reluctant blue, Liam, cute southern boy, classic rock enthusiast blue, and Zoo, an adorable, smart, traumatized young yellow who wears rubber gloves to protect people from her electricity powers. Together, they road trip on a search for safety in a van called Black Bay. Hey, I'm Black Betty, bam to lamb. Hey, I'm Black Betty, bam to lamb. Bam, 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 bam to lamb. Along the way, they deal with bounty hunters. I'm going to capture you and hand you over for money. And there's this blooming sexual tension between Liam and Ruby. They come close to being a thing, but then Ruby's like, Liam, I might erase your whole mind like I did to my parents and then piss you from Thurman, and that would be bad. So no, we can't be BF and Jeff. Hashtag sadness. After a load of driving, our crew finds this kid-run utopia camp called East River. They're so excited because reviews have said it's amazing. But it turns out it's actually run by a super creep orange named Clancy, who's the president's son. Before things fall apart, Zoo ends up leaving camp with her cousins to try and find her parents in California. Soon after, Ruby finds out what a creeper Clancy is, and there's this giant fight where Clancy uses his orange powers and Ruby can't stop him and it's really, really scary. It doesn't look like much from here, but this is what's going on internally. <laughs> In the end, our crew manages to escape the battle unscathed. It looks like everything's gonna be great. But then Chubbs gets shot. And Ruby presses the panic button. She makes a secret deal with Kate so that she'll come and save Chubbs. Ruby agrees to come in and work for the Children's League if Kate will let Liam and Chubbs go. And before she heads out, Ruby wipes Liam's memory of all the happy, beautiful, loving moments they've ever had together and leaves him in a hotel room to have a happy life without her. Fast forward six months later, and Ruby's working for Kate in the Children's League, a group that was founded to expose the rehabilitation camps for how awful they actually are. Ruby's on an op to retrieve a captured Children's League agent. When she locates him and pulls the bag from his head, she's shocked. <gasps> he looks almost exactly like Liam. But it's not. It's his older brother Cole, who looks just like him, but older. Cole's a 20-something, and plot twist, he's a red, which blows all of our minds because he was way too old to be affected by the Ian virus when it swept the nation. We meet some other new characters in Ruby's Children's League op team. Vita, a spicy, feisty, badass blue, and Jude, an adorable 14-year-old yellow who has a great handle on his abilities but ends up tragically dying by the end of the book. Ruby learns by reading Cole's mind that he stole a flash drive with top secret important government information about the Psy Kids plague and sewed it into a jacket that Liam ended up taking by accident. So Ruby embarks on a mission to find Liam and retrieve the flash drive with her team and they pick up Chubbs along the way. Together, they're able to find Flash Drive Jacket and a sick, dying Liam in a terrible, rundown, kid-ruled camp. They have to go on a raid for medical supplies to save Liam, so lots of drama goes down with Psy agents attacking them and capturing Ruby and them using their powers to escape, but in the end, our crew prevails. And they get back on the road to catch up with their favorite Children's League agent, Kate. On the road, things are weird with Ruby and wiped memory Liam. Ruby's all, 
I know you hate me. And Liam's all, hate you? I don't even know you and I love you. And Ruby's all, oh dang, I feel guilty about this. So she goes into Liam's mind and takes down the curtain she put up there to erase herself. And he remembers all their precious lovey moments, but then turns out Liam's kind of mad. He's all, I trusted you. Why didn't you let me have a say in what I remember or do? I wanted to go to the children's league with you. And Ruby's like, I was protecting you. Classic. They finally get a text from Kate saying, meet me in Colorado. Turns out it was actually Clancy pretending to be Kate and they walked right into a trap. But it ends up okay because Clancy gives them intel on how the League is planning to sacrifice the lives of all the Greens they have working for them. And so they decide it's safe to bring him along back to Children's League headquarters to help prevent this issue. Meanwhile, the president fakes an assassination attempt and makes it look like a blue was the assassin so he'd have a viable excuse to attack the Children's League headquarters in LA, which just happens to be where all our characters are. So the government bombs the whole city, Jude dies, and the rest of the crew barely makes it out alive. Clancy also makes it out alive, and we learn that his neurosurgeon mom created a cure to the Psy virus. But Clancy found the files in the Children's League headquarters, burned them all, and wiped his mom's memories so he'd never have to lose his powers. So in the afterlight, our crew heads for the Lodi Children's League headquarters since the one in LA was destroyed. They make the poor decision to bring Clancy along and he F's stuff up as much as he can as they go. Throughout the whole book, things with Ruby and Liam are real tense because they never really talk about where they are in their relationship. Ruby keeps making Liam feel left out by hanging out with his brother Cole and whispering about their very dangerous prisoner Clancy. Ruby starts stress sleepwalking. Their team captures Clancy's mom. Ruby fixes her damaged brain. Clancy's mom does the cure surgery on Clancy and he loses his powers. Ruby wipes his mind so he forgets he was ever mad about it. Chubbs gets together with Vita. Cole dies. Ruby returns to Thurman, takes it down and frees all the kids. A cool government ally, Senator Cruz, announces that if you're under 18 years of age, your parents can choose for you. You'll either have to get the Operation Cure like Clancy or live in a community for the rest of your life. That sounds kind of crappy, so Chubb stands up for the rights of the Psy Kids. Ruby reunites with her grandma and fixes her parents' brains, and the crew rise off into the sunset together for one last road trip. And that's what you missed on the Darkest Minds Trilogy! The new companion novel, The Jackass Legacy, comes out July 31st. You're ready. Oh.